Hey everyone, I'm Davi Mezencio and this is the presentation of our research paper Towards a Digital Twin for Heritage Interpretation from HBIM to AR Visualization. We are a group of five, two professors and three students from Brazil. To be more specific, we are directly from the State University of Campinas. This is a quick outline of our presentation, the topics we will discuss and show. The Digital Twin for Heritage Interpretation, a roadmap of the augmented reality creation. The Pampulia Modern Ensemble, a quick explanation of it. Our methodology, the augmented reality visualization. Our results with a mobile app overview and our conclusions. The Digital Twin for Heritage Interpretation. The Digital Twin, or DT, use the best physical models, sensors and history to mirror the life cycle of its corresponding twin or of the real-life model. The digital twin is a tool capable of managing the information collected and modeling this information. This way being in large use in the field of heritage interpretation since it is always improving the availability and accessibility of the model. The roadmap of the augmented reality creation all the way from the Digital Twin to the Augmented Reality app. The Digital Twin's creation employed terrestrial laser scanning, TSL, and a low-cost unnamed aerial vehicle, or UAV. The process was based on three fundamental steps. Number one, the collection of spatial and documentary data. Number two, the data processing and the dense surface model creation. And number three, the HBIM modeling. The framework includes creating the HBIM model in Autodesk Revit. For the AR process, the model organization was crucial. In this way, to get the model organized in the way that we needed, we used the Dynamo visual programming tool. Dynamo allowed us to create the building component into groups, which made the HBIM model easy to import into the AR model authoring platform. The Pampulia Modern Ensemble our real-life models. They were built between 1942 and 1943 by architect Oscar Niemeyer and by landscaper Burrow Marx, in collaboration with many great artists and professionals, among them the painter Cândido Portinari. The Pampulha Modern Ensemble is composed of four buildings, the St. Francis of Assis Church, the Casino, which is currently the Pampulha Art Museum, the Ballroom, which is currently the center of reference in urbanism, architecture and design, and the Yacht Golf Club. In this work, we will only address the church and the ballroom. The buildings selected to our augmented reality visualization, the ballroom and the church. The ballroom is a small building sitting on an artificial island. The building's singular design encloses all five patterns of modern architecture, the pylotis, the free facade, horizontal windows, the free ground plan, and the flat roof. The St. Francis of Assis Church. The unusual and innovative design of the church marked the first time usage of concrete shells for a religious structure. These selected buildings are relevant to the application of augmented reality because they are heritage sites of high significance to the country and receive thousands of annual visitors. Both buildings offer different architecture solutions to the challenge of adapting the common form of modernist vocabulary to a Brazilian version, which has become a feature of Niemeyer's work. Both digital twins were created in a previous work. Our methodology, from Dynamo to Unity. To create the augmented reality application, the Unity engine was used. Unit is mainly used in the creation of video games, but due to its integration with smartphones and its ability to create complex scenarios, it has become a useful tool to create and deploy applications that use 3D models. The implementation of the application was entirely done within Unity. However, to get the 3D model from Autodesk Revit to Unity, we first passed it through Autodesk 3ds Max which allowed us to convert the RVT file format into the FBX format. The native file format of Revit cannot be imported directly in Unity. Furthermore, all texture from the Revit model should be reapplied in the components using the 3ds Max. 
Inside Unity, we utilized Vuforia, which is a SDK for developing augmented reality applications. The AR visualization. In the picture, we can see the five buttons, which are the icons of our AR visualization app. They represent Le Corbusier five points of the modern architecture, which could be identified in Nehemiah's proposal for the ballroom. The augmented reality, or AR, overlays digital content on real-world objects that a computer sees employing a regular camera, which enriches our view of our surroundings. AR needs a device with at least three components. The first, a camera to provide input from the real world to the computer. Two, a screen or glass so that the user can see the real world enhanced by computer-generated digital information. And three, enough processing power for the device to retrieve features from the real world using computer vision. Smartphones and tablets are devices that already support these three components. They have been used in many AR applications. For successful augmented reality experience, some elements are desirable. The augmented reality should bring new information to augmented objects. The digital models should allow real-time interaction, and they should convey accurate information. We kept these goals in mind when modeling the AR experience of Nehemiah's buildings. The intention was never to replace the experience of seeing these buildings in sight, but bringing some aspect of them, which include the accurate 3D models, the surrounds, and some modern architecture supplementary information. This view is much more complete than just traditional means like videos and photos. The visitors can walk through the buildings, enter in rooms, and look through the windows as if they were in the site. Of course, the visitors can also interact with the five icons which are represented in the image. Results are augmented reality application. The best way to introduce our AR application is by showing how it behaves as an application. We exercise the freedom to experiment during the application development, so each detail is linked to a concept we wanted to convey, trying to bridge the gap between the real buildings and the technology. The mobile application. We can see here the first view when we open the mobile application. The city map, which triggers the augmented reality for the ballroom and the St. Francis of Assis church. When we click on Oscar Niemeyer's button, we can see a quick explanation of the Pampulha Modern Ensemble, explaining to the user who made it, when, and its importance. Then, going back to the first page, we can now click on the icon for the ballroom, which is its signature tile. When inside this ballroom visualization, we can see a quick explanation of the building and its importance. Clicking on the text will dismiss it and we can see the augmented reality. As I said, each one of the buttons is one of the five points of the modern architecture, so clicking on each one of them will only show us this point of the architecture. So when I click on the first one, the Pilotis, we can only see this set of the architecture. This remains true to each one of the buttons. So, when I click on the second one, I can only see the free facade. When clicking on the third one, I can only see the horizontal windows. The fourth one, the free ground plan. And the fifth one, the flat roof. To also enhance the user experience with the model and to add new information, we created a first-person view of the models. Here, when clicking on the sixth button, we can go to the first-person view of the ballroom. The user can now use the joystick to move around, so he can check out all the model's informations. He can look through the windows, he can go inside the building and look around, he can also go back outside and check out each one of the details of the building, including, of course, the signature tiles of the ballroom. This wraps up our quick presentation of the mobile application. And at last, our conclusion. Augmented reality mediation enabled to offer an interpretation and understanding of architecture objects of high historical and cultural value. Preliminary tests attested that the user experienced a more significant interaction with the building, made possible by the augmented reality application. 
Future validation will comprise feedback from the users, including the usefulness, historical content provided, and the ease of interaction with the interface. Future work will also include knowledge-based information to be used for planning and decision-making by the building maintenance and staff. This finalizes our presentation for our research paper towards a digital twin for heritage interpretation from HBIM to AR visualization. Thanks.